live from the Julia Morgan Ballroom in San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Q, covering Structure 2015. Welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live in downtown San Francisco. It's Structure 15. It's the rebirth of Structure after some issues earlier this year, so everybody's psyched to have Structure back. Great audience here at the Julie Morgan Ballroom. Uh, so, got theCUBE out here, and we're really excited to be joined by a former uh, Woman of the Week uh, from DockerCon, uh, Mariana Tessel, SVP Engineering of Docker. Welcome. Thank you. Well Thank you for having me. Absolutely, so you just got back, we talked a little bit off air from Barcelona and DockerCon Europe. So why don't you give us an update? How was the vibe over there? How was the show? What's going on, on on that side of the Atlantic? Yeah, I literally just came back and it's it was actually amazing. It's our second conference in Europe and we went, uh, I think we more than tripled the number of attendees. Um, tickets were completely sold out. The vibe really was outstanding. Obviously for me it was a big this adrenaline rush and you know, seeing how everybody are exciting, use it, being able to demo our products, being able to get responses from customers and users, amazing. Yeah, so there was probably nothing hotter than Docker this last summer. Last time we saw you was at DockerCon. Um, everybody's putting container ships on their, on their <laughs> corporate, <laughs> corporate pages. I mean, Docker was really the hottest, hottest thing going. But you know, now kind of the buzz has, has mellowed a little bit. Now you guys are getting to work, so kind of give us an update of what's happened since the summer uh, till now. Right, I mean, we've been really busy building our stack and building our uh, products, and as users uh, use Docker, they evolve in their use, and we want to be ready there with the products they need. Uh, we have uh, uh, put a lot of emphasis on orchestration. We just, uh, with 1.9, we released uh, Swarm, and we talked in the conference about the scale you can achieve with it, and we actually, again, at the conference, announced a few new products, which has been um, amazing, and online product. We acquired a company called Tutum. We demoed that, um, um, and we also announced a product called the Docker Universal Control Plane which is kind of your management uh, layer, orchestration layer that allows you to manage your containers, Docker native, so lots of, lots of new products to show. That's what we've been doing. Yeah. Um, listening to users and trying to uh, provide what they need. Right, and, and it's interesting because you came from VMware before, so you know a lot about the cloud, you know a lot about virtualization, and, and one of the things is we keep abstracting away from the hardware away from things. And then we have to add this kind of management layer, right? So you kind of have to trade off management and orchestration for this virtualization. How do you see that kind of evolving? What are you seeing in the marketplace? How are customers really adopting that? Uh, right, I mean, I, I think it's the need for uh, orchestration comes from the fact that when you create an app, it's usually um, you know complicated apps that has multiple um, microservices or containers, right, to pick your flavor, but it, it's not just like, hey, one thing and you run it. It's a bunch of things and you run and you need to orchestrate amongst them. So I think the complexity really comes from the fact that applications tend to be quite complex and contain m multiple parts or you know services. Right, right. So the other thing, you run engineering, which is, um, which is great, and it's, it's always an interesting challenge to me. How do you deal with the challenge of kind of supporting open source and having your engineer support open source and be that as a real core piece of who you are? At the same time, they got to get other work done that's not necessarily the open source component that supports some of your direct stuff. How do you manage that from, from an, uh, a head of engineering to make sure that people are allocating their time in, in kind of the appropriate ways? Right, it's, it's obviously something that we are um, trying to do really, really well, and we understand, we want to be very true to our um, open source contributors and audience, as well as build commercial solutions. Um, and actually, in, in, a, in a funny way, or in, a, in an interesting way, even our internal teams, they relate to open source in the way that other companies would. So, uh, when we need, when, com when um, uh, when our internal products need something from open source, so they will do what an external company would do. So instead of saying, oh, I have a dependency, 
go and you know, do it for me. What they will do, they will actually create the code and contribute and wait for the PR to be merged. So sometimes internally we see the same, again, we will behave the same way that external companies will behave with the open source. So we, you know, I think we have a good balance with this. And I actually recently um, you know, gave a presentation about it and preparing to that, we looked at how, how much of the contributions are external and 70% of the contributions to the Docker open source are external. So again, we have a really good balance with open source and commercial and driving both of these and find a way to relate that it's true to uh, open source. Right, um, right. Yeah. Well, and it's such an important part of people's, you know, with who they are and how they contribute and kind of the, the, the feedback they get back from the community. That's so different than, you know, just kind of working on your own thing for your own company. Very, very different and, and very, very powerful. I mean, it, it's, uh, it, it could be um, more, um, you know, like, um, I mean, you need a different setup, but it's actually very, very powerful to work with the community, get the feedback, get their contributions, being able to, um, you know, interact back with them. Super powerful way to work. I'm a big open source fan. Right, and then, and then when you're put, putting your roadmap out um, and, and how you're kind of working down, you know, obviously a group of features, a, a, a way to improve the product. Now you've got this kind of open source contribution. How does that work in? Does it pulling you different directions? Are you using it to augment where you need specific help? How, how does that interplay with your own kind of product roadmap and direction? Right, so, um, y you know, we, the, actually the, the fact that we get external contributions sometimes take our products to a very uh, interesting and compelling directions that we haven't, uh, you know, thought about. An example would be, we work to the community to have this feature called Checkpoint and Restore which is an amazing feature. It's like, uh, you know, from the VM world, it was like vMotions for containers. And, you know, this was a collaboration with the external community, and again, the community will come up with ideas that will be wow, and, and often, yes, it does, it does change a little bit our roadmap, but we also try to publish, like, hey, at least Docker internally, here's what the kind of things we're working on, so the community can um, contribute to that. We also try to explain what is the best way to uh, contribute, you know, like if, if uh, a company works on a secret project on the side and create this huge, huge change to Docker and they'll submit a, what we call a PR bomb, uh, you know, then we <laughs> 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 we're not sure, Th then it's going to be harder to merge and the, the right way to work is, again, like the same way that we work internally is with like small chunks and so we can consume it and, and review it in time and get it in. But I would say the roadmap is a combination of things we want to do internally and things that the community want, and we kind of uh, meet in the middle. Kind of adjust as you, course correct as you go. Exactly. <laughs> kind of like the Odyssey, right? You got to course correct as you go. Oh, you're exactly. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> it's a journey. <laughs> there we go. Um, so last thing, so kind of what, what are your priorities now? What are, you guys, what are you guys looking at? What can we expect when we, uh, when we see you at DockerCon in, in six months or so? You really want me to tell you? Yeah, You're going to see a lot of amazing surprises. <laughs> well, now we know, because you don't really know, because <laughs> the, uh, the community is going to help contribute, and we'll, we'll um, work our way there. Exactly. Any top priorities, though, uh, things well, that, that we, you're we, working on? Yeah, I mean, again, we want to continue to evolve the, uh, the platform, make it more scalable. I mean, we, we see companies really move their use from development to production, and we understand Docker is now heavily used in production. We understand it comes with needs around quality, stability, so you're going to see more and more investment, security, we made huge investment in security. So you're going to see more of that, right. kind of the boring but super important things right. to make it runnable for people. And then you'll see us invest in more and more creative things and um, understanding how it make it um, super easy to use, yet super sophisticated. And obviously on the commercial side, we're going to introduce more and more uh, products that we believe would be very helpful uh, for for users and um, yeah, so again, involve evolving in all areas, orchestration, networking, dev tools, you know, all, all of that we do. You'll see a lot of evolution there and the surprise effect from the community, which is uh, you know, <laughs> which we don't know, which we don't we know. We'll know soon, but that's important because there was kind of a little bit of a soft undercurrent at at DockerCon, which was you know a lot of people are are using containers a lot in dev, but you know not necessarily a huge uptake in the production side. Dev. So it sounds like that's no, we, really seen, changing quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah. When we see because we survey and we see also external surveys that come back and. We see a really big amount of users using it in production. And remember, I think last we spoke, it was a DockerCon US, and we had just experimental networking feature. Guess what? It just went GA uh, recently, just a few weeks ago. So it's now fully production. So we kind of understand that we need to get there, and we need to kind of provide these this solutions. Awesome. Well, Mariana, thanks for stopping by. Hopefully, you can catch up on your sleep coming back from Europe. <laughs>
<laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right. I'm Jeff Frick with Mariana Tesla from Docker. You're watching theCUBE. We are live at downtown San Francisco at Structure 15. We'll be right back after this short break. Thanks for watching.